All right, episode 27, filming from NOLA. Let's get to the three topics. I'm going to talk about King, Warrior, Magician, Lover. It's the title of a book, not four different topics. That's just one of the topics. Talk about loneliness, something I know that uh, I've been struggling with and I'm sure other people have, so we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit here. And then, unfortunately, saying goodbye to Noah. Uh, so my stay in New Orleans is coming to an end, so we'll do a little bit of a recap of all the fun and experiences I've had out here. Um, it's a little bit sombering. Sombering, is that the right word? I don't know. It's okay. We're going to roll with it. And uh, we'll talk about that we're uh, on to new things as well. So that's doesn't have to be too sad because there's new adventures coming up. That's what I'm going for. All right, topic number one. Topic number one is this book, King, Warrior, Magician, Lover. Just finished this recently. Pretty interesting read. If you've been watching any of my previous episodes, you'll know that I'm on a path of self-growth, trying to dig into who I am, dig into my past, trying to become a better person, which I think we can all do day by day. Here we go. I think that's the streetcar. Let's give it a minute. Roll with me. I'll do I'll do like some weird interpretive dance as it goes by. Why not? There we go. Take a drink of water too. Okay. Topic number one. This book right here, King, Warrior, Magician, Lover. This is the uh, Rediscovering the Archetypes of the Mature Masculine. It's a very interesting book. If you've been following in my previous episodes, you'll know that I'm on a path of self-growth, trying to dig into who I am, dig into my history, dig into my past, trying to become a better person, which I think we can all do. It's sort of a lifelong journey. I encourage other folks to go on the same path with me. Nothing wrong with trying to be better, right? Uh, so anyhow, this particular book is about male masculinity, which I think in current times has a bit of a negative connotation to it, rightfully so. There's a lot of aggressive behavior going on in our society right now, and I think it gets tied to masculinity, which is a shame um, but it is somewhat of a reality. And this book touches on a little of that. It's not completely about that. It's more about um, the transition from boy to adulthood and how there's a lack of guidance and a lack of ritual behind that. And that explains some of the immaturity we're seeing in society. And so I think that in part explains some of the aggressiveness, some of the negative stuff we've been seeing in our current world. Um, and I've been finding it pretty fascinating. It's definitely worth a reread. Uh, not even just worth, I have to do a reread because it was dense and had a lot of wisdom, a lot of knowledge. And so I need to take some time to sit with that, let it sink in, see how it plays out in my life, and then probably do another read and try to get a better understanding of, of the wisdom in here. Yeah, in particular, one of the things that it touches on, the uh, main theme that it touches on is a shadow self, which is the immature energy that's within us that um, needs to be explored. It'll never go away. And it needs to be explored and managed and um, kind of brought to the surface. And the, the managing piece is what leads you into a more adult, a more mature masculine self. And so I think that's very fascinating. And um, the king, the warrior, the magician, the lover, that's the more mature energy of the masculine. And in each of those archetypes, there's a shadow um, energy or immaturity that needs to be dealt with and figured out. So that's a journey that I'm gonna be going on. I don't know how long it's gonna take, but as I have discoveries, I'll share them with you folks. Uh, again, here's the book. If you've read this book or if you've had any experience with some of this stuff, Love to hear from you. Feel free to leave some comments. We'll discuss them. All right, topic number two. We're talking about loneliness. Something that I've been struggling with. Um, I'm on this journey across the U.S. Having some fun, having some adventure. Also, 
that's an opportunity to, to grow and to, to learn about myself and learn about the US a little bit. And um, of course, because I'm doing this as a solo thing, I am definitely having some bouts of loneliness. Some days are pretty tough, other days are pretty great. And I wanted to discuss that with you folks because uh, loneliness is definitely something I'm sure all of you have dealt with and I think it's worth talking about. I think we should talk about more of this type of stuff, make it more common, make it more well known so that we don't feel so alone in our feelings. Uh, in particular, what I've been finding very interesting is that there uh, is a sort of a difference between the feeling and the actual experience and to kind of bring that home even further, I've been doing meditation. So again, if you follow any of my previous episodes, you know that I, I do practice meditation. I find it very helpful, very beneficial. And in particular, uh, the one that I've been using recently is reframing loneliness. And it talks exactly about this. It talks about how there is a difference between the feeling versus what's actually being experienced. And uh, let me dive into that a little bit with you folks. So what you can witness, what you can experience is that you could be surrounded by people and feel lonely, or you can actually be completely by yourself uh, doing your own thing and feel very connected. And you can have any of the sort of gradients between those two extremes. And I think that's very fascinating, very interesting. It is something that I've noted. I've, it is something that I've noticed while being out here uh, or being on this trip in general, not just, not just in New Orleans, but just in general kind of doing this, um, I can definitely have times where I'm exploring, I'm adventuring, doing things on my own and kind of keeping to myself and actually feeling very confident, very empowered, very much connected to the people around me, connected to nature, connected to the world. And then there's other times where I can be having a great social experience, connecting with people, talking with people. Um, I met some new friends on, on this adventure out here. I've met friends in Austin and feeling very uh, in the moment connected and not lonely and then kind of walking away from it. And perhaps maybe it's because the, the energy level sort of dies back down and I'm back, back in my own head again, feeling very lonely after the fact. And so there is that difference between the experience and between the feeling. And I think that's, that's something to be aware of. And I think that gives me, at least gives me some hope that the feeling can be managed, it can be worked with, and in particular using meditation, I've been finding as a great way of dealing with that, of coping with that. Uh, the, the meditation, again, is framing, reframing loneliness, and one of the techniques is a visualization technique where you visualize uh, a ray of sun, Ooh, hit the mic, hope that, hope that doesn't bother us too much, um, a ray of sunlight going into you and expanding out and expanding um, further than the body, further than the planet, further than whatever you can imagine, trying to get as expansive as possible. And for whatever reason, that definitely kind of recenters and regrounds me and makes me feel like I'm, a, I'm connected again, which I think is really interesting. I'd love to hear from you folks if you're having similar experiences, if you've practiced this type of meditation technique. I'd love to hear your take on it, see what you've been coming up with, uh, and feel free to share with me if you're feeling lonely, if you've been having bouts of it, or um, maybe you've had some techniques that you've used that have helped you out. I'd love to hear from you folks. Hit me up. All right, last but not least, topic number three. I'm gonna be saying goodbye to New Orleans. Like I said, it's kind of a bummer. Energy level is kind of tapering down. It's kind of sad, but we're on to new things. In a few days, I'll be heading out to Washington, D.C., so I'll be exploring that area. And then that's going to turn into a road trip, which I think will be super interesting. We'll figure out how we're going to do the filming, but uh, it should be fun. Anyhow, New Orleans, it's been a pleasure. It's been super interesting, very magical out here. Um, definitely enjoy the energy, the vibe of the people, the hospitality off the charts. People are super nice out here. So a little bit of a recap, so that way I can remember what I did, I can look back on this, and then maybe give you folks some inspiration for things to do out here. Who knows? First thing that comes to mind is the super funky and interesting Airbnb that I had in Lafayette, um, right next to the Greenway, which was super cool. I was able to uh, 
walk a few blocks, hit the greenway, and be able to walk about 30 minutes into the French Quarter. So that was nice, nice little stay. But the Airbnb itself was super interesting. It was uh, two stories, had nice wraparound balconies, and uh, the artwork was uh, fascinating, had a, definitely an adult flair to it. Perfect place to entertain, perfect place for uh, maybe a, a couple to reunite their spark, if you know what I mean. But uh, very, very cool, very fun. Definitely check out my Instagram. I've got some uh, video walkthrough of that place so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, what else do I have in here? The architecture. The architecture right here is phenomenal. It is a Creole style architecture, which I, I did a little bit of research and it's the architecture itself is actually unique to New Orleans. And it gets inspiration from uh, French, Spanish, and Caribbean styles. And so that all comes together and I guess because of the humidity, because of the weather, that also that also affects the architecture out here. So that's why you see such lovely, lovely buildings. And again, head over to Instagram if you want to see some photos. There's also some videos of the architecture out here. I have to say the the plants, the amount of green stuff growing out here, I guess probably because of the humidity, phenomenal. Super pretty. Uh, I love the sort of the, the texture clash between the architecture, the stonework, and uh, the, the nature. I, I love that sort of, uh, what's the word, juxtaposition, if you will, between those two things. Oh, and, and the rain and the thunder out here. I know that might, maybe, maybe the people living here, it's probably annoying, or maybe you're just used to it and it's like no big deal, but it's been a long time. Uh, living out in Portland, Portland, Oregon, we get a lot of rain, so I'm used to the rain, but we don't get any thunder, and I miss that. I, growing up in San Diego, I used to get thunder all the time, especially during the summer. So um, this was a nice little throwback to my childhood, so I appreciate that. Thank you, Nola, for bringing the magic. Definitely appreciate it. Uh, oh, and the rain, the rain is different here. It's a bit more tropical, so like it'll start, it, like the, the first day I was here, it just started pouring, and it poured for a good solid hour, and then it just dies. And then it's back to normal, hot weather, walk around and uh, I thought it was kind of cool because it gave you an opportunity to kind of slow down so I would I would be wandering around the city and I would it would start raining I would get underneath um, one of the balconies like on underneath it and get protected from the rain take a seat watch the rain watch people kind of scrambling around trying to figure out what to do and uh, kind of reflect on my day and then the rain would stop and even if I was drenched it was still humid enough where I would go walking again and all of a sudden I'd be dry. I'd be dry within five, 10 minutes. So it was great. Don't be afraid of the rain. You can walk around in it. You'll dry up right away. Uh, what else do I have in here? Oh, <laughs> I didn't even notice this, but I, apparently I've been having a lizard friend join me on this adventure. So uh, I'm not gonna give away too much, but go check out my Instagram. See if you can find the lizard in a few of my photos. I guess that's a, that's a pretty good hint. Austin and New Orleans. He's in both places. I, I hope he traveled with me, though I doubt it. But maybe it's the same lizard spirit. How about that? Let me pause for a second. I need to take a drink of water. Okay, so some of the interesting places I went to the Blacksmith Bar. Blacksmith Bar, if I can say the words correctly. And I made, I made uh, some new friends there. Nicole and Freddie, if you're watching this, Hey, glad you guys made it home safely. Can't wait to adventure some more. Uh, but the Blacksmith Bar was super interesting. The building was built in 1722. Yeah, 17, 1722. It's pretty old. It's supposedly one of the oldest bars. One of the, well, the, one of the, how do I put this? One of the oldest buildings turned into a bar. How about that? There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Let's go check it out. It's very famous. It's very popular. Uh, if you want to get there and have it be a more chill time, I would say go, go during the week. If you want to go party, go during the weekend. Uh, on Saturday, it was slammed. It was crazy. Like music was blasting out of all the doors and windows. There were people everywhere, people pouring into the street. Pretty common. Um, so it just depends on your vibe. If you want a chill time, weekday. Uh, if you want to go party, weekend. So let's see, I, I definitely had a ton of food, lots and lots of delicious food. I had my first crawfish gumbo, off the charts, delicious. Um, oh, and just, uh, 
I'm not going to get this 100% correct, but to give you a little bit of um, a little bit of knowledge, I'm going to share some knowledge with you. Uh, gumbo served with a little rice, jambalaya made with rice. So there's a there's a rice difference between the two. So if you if you're getting if you're getting a side of rice or a little amount of rice, you're probably eating a gumbo. What else did I have? Oh, I had a a uh, crawfish po' boy in the French Quarter, in the French market. And it was delightful, but I, I feel like I might have gotten price gouged. It was $18. And this this po' boy was typical size. Maybe, I don't know, something around that, that, that diameter, that width. That's what I'm looking for. And uh, $18, I'm sure you can find a cheaper po' boy. Um, but it was good. I'm not gonna complain. It was delightful. That was in the French market, in the French Quarter. The market in the French Quarter. There we go. What else? Oh, I went to and let's see if I can get the words right on this or the pronunciation. Um, pesh, pesh, um, seafood grill. Pesh, 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 pesh. I don't know. You guys will figure it out. It's a seafood grill. It's it's spelled P E C H E. Go check it out. It's a little bit pricey, but well worth it. Uh, very delicious. Fried okra was off the charts. It's a great way to start your meal. Uh, the yellowtail snapper, delicious. And the zucchini. I think it was a fried zucchini, but I want to say it was sort of like a de decomposed, decom that's not right. Um, deconstructed, decomposed is disgusting. You don't want decomposed food. You want deconstructed. It was like a deconstructed fried zucchini where the zucchini itself was grilled and there were like fried little bits of deliciousness sprinkled on top. And I believe there was a feta cheese or some sort of strong cheese that brought the whole thing together. Give it a try. You won't be disappointed. Very delicious. Oh, and I believe, um, I believe it's the, the restaurant's name again, Pesh? It's French for fish, which makes sense because it's a, they specialize in fish. So there you go. So you can, now that you know what the word means, you can you can probably look up, or if you know French, you can, in your head, say the correct pronunciation. You can help me out. I'm gonna butcher a lot of this stuff. I apologize. I'm just that's just how it is. It's how it's gonna be. Oh, I had my first absinthe drink ever out here. It was a uh, a frappe, 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 frappe. Again, see so here we go. Not gonna get the words right, but you'll understand what I mean. It was delightful. Uh, if you like licorice flavored drinks, then you're going to love this. If you don't, you're going to hate it because that's what it tastes like. It tastes like a very strong licorice flavor. And for whatever reason, that licorice flavor to me was very refreshing on a hot, humid day. Had a gator hot dog. Oh, let me tell you, gator hot dogs are delicious. Highly recommend them. Also had a breakfast burrito and I, I'm, I'm, it's escaping me right now where I got it from. I think if you go to Instagram, you'll see where I got it from. I've got it probably in the NOLA foods section, the highlight of my profile. So go check it out. Delicious breakfast burrito. Perfect if you have a hangover, which is probably going to happen if you're out here. Had some fried chicken from Willie's. Famous Willie's out here. And there's, I think it might be a chain. There's quite a few of them. Um, not Willie Mays. I, I should have gone there. I didn't. It just means that I need to come back here, give that place a visit. But this was uh, Willie's Fried Chicken. I, I think that's the name of it. You'll see it. It's If you uh, wander around downtown, there's tons of them. Uh, but it was good. Don't get me wrong. The fried chicken was off the charts. The super delicious, very moist, good flavor. Very, very crispy, which is what it's all about. And they have daiquiris, which, I mean, of course, all, all the places down here have um, slushies or daiquiris being served at any given time. Give it a try. You're out here. Win in NOLA. Got to get a daiquiri. I had uh, rabbit pasta. I know, friendly little rabbits. I'm sorry, but I had to give it a try. Uh, rabbit pasta at a, at a nice Italian restaurant where I met another person, another friend, Michelle. So Michelle, if you're watching, hello. It was a pleasure sharing some food with you. And thank you for the recommendation to going to Drip, where we had avocado ice cream. Not avocado, avocado. 
avogato. Hopefully I'm saying that right. But what that is, is it's espresso dripped over ice cream. And this place specializes in that. So they give you, we did a, a three ice cream flights. So we had a few different flavors. We had a chocolate, a coconut, and a banana. All were great. Banana was the best, in my opinion. Go out there, give it a try. The place is called Drip. Can't miss it. You'll find it. What else? What else happened? We got, I got a lot of food to get through here. We're almost done. Don't worry. It's not too much rambling. Not too much more rambling. But we are going to pause so I can have a drink of water. All right. Another food place, Compare La Pond. Hopefully I'm getting that right. Um, which... <laughs> Maybe there's a slight theme here. It, compare La Pond means brother rabbit, and I'm not exactly sure of the uh, association there, but that's what it means, brother rabbit. Another restaurant um, had a lot of very interesting things there. Had pig ears as an appetizer. I know, again, a little bit strange, but when in Nola, give it a try. They were amazing. Great way to start your meal just like the fried okra at the other place. Pig ears here at the um, Compare La Pond. Amazing. A conch, which is a, um, it's, I, I believe it's a, some sort of little animal that lives inside of a, of a conch shell. And that was, that was unique, never had that before. It has a similar texture to calamari. So if you like calamari, if you like that texture, you'll like that as well. And it was breaded. It was a breaded um, conch, and it was very good. It had a, this was unique as well, had a uh, bread, what was it, a bread put? No, um, a special type of bread. It's escaping me what it was exactly. Maybe it'll come to me. I'll try to remember. Um, a vegetarian tartine, which was really great. It was um, like a thin cracker, thin and flaky cracker, very buttery with some, some roasted veggies on there and also a cheese that just brought that whole dish together. And then the, the main courses, which were phenomenal. Uh, there was a catfish, which was delicious. And then my personal favorite, there was a curried goat that was off the charts. Delicious. And then we ended that with a mango creme brulee. So you can't go wrong, mango creme brulee, why not? Sounded good, tasted good. And uh, that was another recommendation from um, from Nicole and Freddie. Uh, not even just a recommendation, they invited me out. So again, thank you. Thank you for all the wonderful food experiences. It was amazing. I'm sure we'll do more. Uh, we also went to, we did, we did some adventuring together, which was great. We went to Napoleon House where we got a Pimm's Cup. And if you don't know what a Pimm's Cup is, it is gin, lemonade, seven up, and a slice of cucumber. Put that slice on there to make it nice and decorative. Decorative drinks are important. Went to, we went to uh, Pat O'Brien's where we, we got involved in some dual piano, dueling, dueling, dual, dueling, how about that, pianos. And they might have played a recommendation of mine. Again, go on Instagram if you want to find out what that recommendation was. Uh, went to Cafe Negril for some live music, kind of just popped in there on a whim, we wanted to experience that energy and that was super fun. They had a, they had a band that was going off, um, some super good guitar stuff going on and a really good synth player and the vocalist was off the charts. So I'm sure that they're on rotation or you know probably different bands come through there. So give that a try if you want some live music and uh, have that, that liveliness. Liveliness of live music. Is that what I'm looking for? I don't know, I'm gonna keep going. Last but not least, is this last but not least or do I have another page? Nope, this is the last one. I told you we would finally get here. Um, Hotel Peter and Paul. Again, Nicole and Freddie and I, we kind of stumbled into this place. We were kind of wandering around and we found this really beautiful church cathedral structure and we were wondering what it was about. We walked up to it and noticed that it was actually a hotel. And then we found out that the, I believe the rectory where the priests would normally stay was converted into a bar. And that was Elysian Bar. Very fancy drinks, very fancy atmosphere. Check it out. And with that, Nola, thank you. I will return at some point. And peace.